From worst to possibly first, the Arizona Cardinals have a chance to become the next best thing in the NFL. In this series, we're going to go ahead and talk about how the Arizona Cardinals are going to do with the best division in all of football. First, we're going to go ahead and start off with the San Francisco 49ers, whose team was led by an undrafted free agent running back in Roheem Mostert and a rookie wide receiver who took the league by storm in Debo Samuels. Now, they are coming off a Super Bowl loss. How badly is that going to affect the San Francisco 49ers this coming 2020 season? Let's go ahead and roll that intro. guys welcome back now like I mentioned in the intro what I wanted to do is start a series how the 2020 Arizona Cardinals are going to do against the best division in all of football now we are starting with the San Francisco 49ers so if you guys can do me a favor and kill that like button if we get 100 likes I'll go ahead and make those other two videos breaking down the Los Angeles Rams as well as the Seattle Seahawks so do me a favor kill that like button and if you're new please consider subscribing everything in this channel we do game previews we do uh, reactions to uh, the game so make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well and put that notification bell on just so you're aware when the next video drops and now on to the topic of choice here the Arizona Cardinals ended up last year at a record with 5 10 and 1 a lot of people might say you guys were a terrible team you guys didn't do anything I don't like to think that way. I like to think of a work in progress. The Arizona Cardinals started off with a whole new coaching staff in hiring Cliff Kingsbury out of Texas Tech and getting uh, defensive coordinator Vance Joseph. Cliff Kingsbury did have a little bit of a rough start, whether it was because we wanted to hide our top secret offense, uh, whatever the situation was, maybe he didn't kind of get into the groove of things. He didn't really know how to pass protect with the NFL type of play when he was used to the collegiate level. Now, Cliff Kingsbury did do a better job job in you know scheming up some great offensive plays later on in the year which I can definitely go ahead and commend him but there was a lot of a lot of people saying that Vance Joseph needed to go within the first year of being the defensive coordinator now I would kind of you know come to his aid at this point because he didn't have a lot of things to work with whether a lot of his key pieces were let go before the season started suspended for six games or even hurt for the entire year he didn't get a lot to work with in this last year although we did end it off the season at 5 10 and 1 that doesn't really show how good we played against the san francisco 49ers which were in the super bowl let me remind you not only saying that as a biased arizona cardinal fan i had multiple san francisco 49er fans reach out to me and saying wow you guys have a really good team a good young team you know a work in progress that's going to be getting there at one point but you know as of right now we obviously beat you and you know they wanted to go ahead and glow but there was a lot of people saying that they hated the Arizona Cardinals because we went ahead and played them that tough both times I've seen this multiple times throughout the years of watching the Arizona Cardinals there's some teams out there to go ahead and shut it down especially the last two to three games because they don't really have a lot to play for so what they do is they just don't give their 100% now the Arizona Cardinals did not do that this last year they played every single team extremely hard all four quarters especially against the San Francisco 49ers now the San Francisco 49ers gained and lost a lot of key pieces, a lot of starters this last offseason. Let's start off with who they went ahead and lost. Daniel Sanders, which was their veteran wide receiver. They lost Joe Staley, which was probably one of their best offensive tackles that they had for, for quite some time. Whenever you think of an offensive line, you think of Joe Staley. They also lost DeForest Buckner, who they ended up trading to the Indianapolis Colts for a first round pick. Let's talk about who they gained. They gained a great, great offensive tackle in Trent Williams, who was traded to them by the Washington Redskins. They also gained with their first round pick uh, Javon Kinlaw which is a defensive tackle out of South Carolina now this is a person that I wanted to go ahead and make a note Brandon Ayuk was also picked up with their second first round pick of ASU that wide receiver can ball now this is somebody that I'm more worried about more than any of that list right there Brandon Ayuk is a straight baller I've seen him play with ASU and he can definitely make some plays happen I was super surprised that the San Francisco 49ers ended up getting Javon Kinlaw when they had the options to either get CD Lamb or Jerry Judy, but knowing that they traded DeForest Buckner to the uh, Indianapolis Colts, it makes sense that they went ahead and got Javon Kinlaw. One of the biggest weak points for the Arizona Cardinals was their defense last year. It was apparent. Everybody knew it. One thing that we could not do was cover the tight end. Now, they do have one of the best tight ends in all of football with George Kittle. He probably didn't have one of his best years last year, whether it was injury, whatever, whatever the situation was, but we could not cover him 
to save our lives. Now, George Kittle's stats against the Arizona Cardinals was not like huge extravagant, but honestly, it was more of a nuisance more than anything because it was a trend that continued to happen. George Kittle's stats were 79 total yards. I believe he caught the ball like six to seven times. He had one touchdown against the Arizona Cardinals. He averaged about 13.2 yards per attempt, which that's that's insane to me. The Arizona Cardinals, when we're playing defense, it, they made it seem like we're playing players like Gronkowski's, the Kelsey's, the George Kittle's, the uh, Tony Gonzalez, that type of premier tight ends week in and week out. It was, it was a disgusting team to see. It was weird to see, you know, fans Joseph not have an answer for it. But I really do think it probably was more because he didn't have his players to work with. I hope that all changes with our eighth overall pick and getting Isaiah Simmons. Now, there was multiple different talks by Vance Joseph saying that their number one key spot that they want to have Isaiah Simmons play, although he's a hybrid player, and to play the weak side linebacker route, which hopefully translate to covering tight ends because that is one of the biggest weak points that we had of all of last year and it was really upsetting to see that we could not find a solution for it week in and week out. The Arizona Cardinals do play the San Francisco 49ers twice this coming year. Now, I mean, it's obvious. We, we play our divisions twice a year. Now, I'm super excited to find out that we're playing them pretty much the, the start of our season, the very first game, and the second to the last game. Now, there's a lot to go ahead and uncover within that time frame. Honestly, do feel like that very first game, the Arizona Cardinals are going to come out with the W. It's going to be because of the Super Bowl hangover for the San Francisco 49ers, but I do feel like the Arizona Cardinals has gained a lot more talent, a lot more key pieces to pull an upset against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, the last game that we have, the second to last game, which I believe is going to be week 16 against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, that's going to be a flex schedule, which like I mentioned before, um, it probably has to do with, you know, the, the battle of the division at that point. Hopefully, the, uh, the schedule makers really do see like this is going to be a potential really good game to watch and that's why they're in that flex position. I, I think we're going to split the series. Um, I think the Arizona Cardinals and San Francisco 49ers are going to split it. Um, yes, I do think that the San Francisco 49ers are going to go through that hangover, the Super Bowl hangover, whatever, whatever have you. We can't ignore the talent that they brought in, whether it's Trent Williams to cover uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, Javon Kinlaw out of the draft, as well as Brandon Ayuk. Now, all that is all good and gravy but it's not going to matter unless Jimmy Garoppolo stays healthy. In the scenario where Jimmy Garoppolo stays healthy we'll split the series Arizona Cardinals wins one and the San Francisco 49ers wins one. But if Jimmy Garoppolo does not stay healthy which we have seen it before uh, the whole season, the whole season rides on Jimmy Garoppolo's health. Now, it's really sad and unfortunate to say, but they don't really have any depth within their quarterback position um, to go ahead and maintain another Super Bowl run. Now, it's really, really up to Jimmy Garoppolo to stay healthy. All that talent that they brought in, all the talent that they had before is not going to matter if he goes down with the season-ending injury. So that's what I think about the San Francisco 49ers and the Arizona Cardinals this coming 2020 season. Bottom line, it all rides out if Jimmy Garoppolo can stay healthy. Um, and let's see how it all pans out. Definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm super curious to find out about it. If you have not seen my entirety of um, you know my win-loss record for the Arizona Cardinals, I'll be posting it right here. And I'll also be posting it at the end of the video. Definitely leave a like. Definitely leave a comment. If you're new, please consider subscribing. That's all I got for this episode, guys. And I'm out.